Uh, no, we no, did not. We okay. did not. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, can you guys hear me? Hi, just wanna welcome everybody to the Reardon Clinic today. Thank you so much. If you're new here, uh, welcome. If not, thanks for coming back. Um, I'm Dr. Ann Zotterer, and it is my privilege today to introduce two people that are very special to us here at the Reardon Clinic. Um, Chandra Hartman and Jocelyn Picard um, have been volunteers here at the Reardon Clinic, and it's always so neat for us to have people that not only volunteer their time, but fully embrace everything that we are about here at the Reardon Clinic. And these two ladies are the example of living life, you know, truly kind of seeking, um, you know, the root cause of illness. And so as part of both of their journeys, um, they both have a lot of experience with essential oils. So this is a perfect fit today to, for them to come and talk a little bit about um, the oils, their journey with the oils, and kind of from a basic perspective, how you can use um, oils to replace some of the you know chemicals that are in our daily life. And so, um, so it's my pleasure to introduce both of them, and they'll tell you a little bit more about their story, um, and uh, and of course about the oils. So, welcome. So, so Jaws is gonna. Yeah, you're well, I guess start. I'm going to start because I'm probably more excited than anybody here. <laughs> but um, anyway, that. My story started about 14 years ago with a functional chiropractor that was in town. Um, she was very into altering our lifestyles because what we were doing was not right. We weren't eating right. We weren't exercising right. Maybe not exercising at all, really. But um, and, and a lot of stress. So she did a lot of things in our, in. Um, functional medicine that really started us thinking about, okay, how can we eat right? How can we uh, change things to be better? So that was my first experience with essential oils. And um, she had it, had it oils in her, in her room, and she would tell us a little bit about them. But it wasn't really her, um, ex I, want, I don't want to say expertise, but that was not her main function, Okay. So it was all about total lifestyle change. And so I asked her about some of the oils one day, and she was telling me about it. And she said, frankincense. And I'm like, oh, frankincense. I remember that. That was part of the Christmas oils. You know, the wise men brought frankincense to baby Jesus. And so I thought, I'm going to buy a bottle of frankincense. Well, I didn't know that it was going to take me two years to pay for it. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it was, it was um, a little bit more than I thought. But I'll tell you what, it lasted me a very long time, and I really didn't know how to use it. So it's been, it, mine has been a, a, a long journey to learn all of those things. And I'm so excited to be here because then about two years ago, I came out to volunteer. There was a, um, some kind of advertisement or something, and I called, and Chandra said, hey, come out, and I'll give you a tour, and if you'd like to volunteer. And this has been a lifestyle change for us. I love it. And if and for anybody that doesn't come to the lectures, you're really missing out. Or if you're not watching them on YouTube, you're really missing out on so many things that can help um, with everything in your life, no matter if it's oils or if it's supplements, nutrition, exercise. You've got it all right here, all the information on, on their clinic site, everything. So I'm really excited to be here, and I'll hand it over to Chandra. Okay. All right. So I'm Chandra Hartman, and I actually moved here three years ago. And how I got here was kind of an interesting journey. The doctor that I went to was a functional medicine in L.A. I lived in Los Angeles. And she was really good friends with Dr. Reardon when he was alive. So she said, when you go out to Wichita, I need you to go and check in there. And then she knew I'd need a good clinic to go to. So she said, go check with them. So I'm an RN, and I'm an aromatherapist as well, and I do sell oils just like Jocelyn. Jocelyn's had such an amazing journey herself. I mean, she knows sometimes she catches me. She knows more than I at times. So I'm very pleased to say we share a lot of information back and forth, and it's nice. Um, so on my journey, how I found out about oils is really interesting. I do a lot of ministry work outside of the country, and a lot of third world countries will use essential oils as their medicine. And sometimes they'll even put them in the IVs. And so to me, that was a fascination that I had. 
on my journey because I didn't know anything about oils. I really had, you know, hadn't really had any type of medicine studies about them or whatever. But that kind of led me into studying and then led me into going, well, I wanted to supplement my nursing degree and get an aromatherapy degree as well. So there is some areas of the world where people go to aromatherapists for treatments as well. So, But in Kansas, I don't practice or whatever. I just help manage the volunteer program here right now. And I kind of use them just to help people, really. And a lot, a lot to do with ministry, a lot of people that can't afford medicine, too. But we're blessed here at this clinic to have, when I say medicine, is important to look at it holistically. Your body, everything. So oils are a part of it. But everything we do here is to educate you. And oils is an education. So there's all different ways that we're going to cover it. We're going to keep it a very basic. We ask in the, in the um, feedback that you give us, we'd like to do more classes, but we'd really like to ta- uh, tailor them to what you guys are interested in. We can do all kinds of stuff. We can cover oils with animals. We can cover... Um, cooking with Jaws and I thought about cooking with oils is kind of a cool class too. Um, so just tell us your interest and then we'll leave a little question and answer period at the end. Did everybody sign in at the back? Because we're giving a drawing. So we want to make sure you have a ticket. So if you did not, make sure that you go back there and, and sign in. And we're going to go ahead and get started if that's okay. So one of the things that Jaws and I want to start off by saying is, is that um, we're, we're, we're not clinicians. We're not going to, to, to teach you or we're not going to diagnose any of your issues. If you need medical care, we have wonderful doctors here that can. So, so if you come up to us and say, um, you know, basically I have all these symptoms, what can, we're going to refu- refer, refer you to using a reference guide. Reference guides have what ails you <laughs> and what oils go with that. But we're not here to diagnose. So a disclaimer, I just want to say we're not going to do that here in this class. So oils, everybody's body is different. God created us very different. So we, we believe here at Rudin Clothing that, that what you eat is very important. So, so we believe that. We also believe that essential oils can be used as any other supplement that you're using in your body. We believe in supplements. We have a wonderful store here. One of the things that Jaws and I do is help stock the store. We're here for to help people as they come in also with, with supplements. We also believe in medication. We didn't say throw out all your meds, okay? We're not that kind of people, okay? There is a reason for medication. We believe that. We also believe in taking care of our homes in a way that we don't use chemicals. So personal care, even for our bodies. So uh, we've gotten away from using chemicals on our bodies. Like I love perfume, but now I really don't use perfume because a lot of the stuff that's in perfume is really bad for you. So I use essential oils. And also for my antidepressant or deodorant, we, you can make them. You know, uh, so we're into a lot of that stuff. We make our own bath products. We And it's fun when you have friends that are are into oils because then, you know, you can share all kinds of recipes. On Pinterest also is all kinds of recipes that people have come up with as well. The oils also help with exercise, just so you know that. They also help, Dr. Anna is a chiropractor, so there's oils that even help with chiropractic you know, so Valor and different ones. So so just so you know, that's kind of, we're just going to keep this very basic and just talk about a few oils. There's a history of oils. Um, J- Jaws and I love it that they're listed in the Bible. And that we're both Christians, but we feel this is really important to us. And just the study of oils and to know that the ancient e- Egyptians were also we're into it as well. So it goes back in time. So, so as Frank, uh, frankincense is, is one of Jaws' favorites. And so, but we, we all love them. And we have some books in the back um, that uh, talk about the ancient oils, you know, from the Bible too. But if you study any history, 
you know, from ancient times, Egyptian, you know, Romans, all that. That was kind of their medicine at the time. One of the stories I like to tell is about Black Plague. So, um, and Jaws, can, you can jump in if you need to. But um, one of the things that happened with Black Plague, do you guys know the history? Has anybody remember studying the Black Plague? Okay, so do you know that they used essential oils to treat it? Okay, so the story is, is that Black Plague, when it happened, it affected all the cattle, all their live, you know, all their livestock out there. And so what happened is it was everywhere. So they started, as the people died, they started burying them in the ground, and then the animals were eating the products, and then that was digesting, so they were having the problems as well. So then they started burying anybody that died of black plague into tombs. And then, and, but they still couldn't find a cure at that particular time. So there was thieves that were going and robbing these tombs because when they buried them, they took all their products, everything they had in their home, furniture, everything, any riches, even money or whatever, they, the jewelry, they buried it with them because anything that, why they had blood pug, that was because it, it was airborne, anything that was in their exposure, you know, they just took it and buried it. So thieves would actually break into these tombs. And they, yeah, that is, that's, yeah, yeah, that's one of them. So anyway, but it, it's really interesting because they couldn't figure out, you know, how these people were breaking into the tombs, robbing these tombs and still living to continue to do it. So what they were doing is they had created a formula of essential oils, which is a combination of stuff, and they doused themselves, and they put bandanas over their face, and they would actually go in and they would rob these tombs. And so, they, and they, and I, just to ahead. interrupt, yeah. but they, they were the sons, usually, or families of apothecaries and perfumeries. Mm-hmm. So they were families that were well aware of what oils were all about. So. Yeah, yeah, so when they actually got caught... One of the things they did is they said, could you share this with us, you know, this, this formula that you were using? And that's, sorry. <laughs> that was not fun. <laughs> so they were actually shared the formula, and that was one of the things that they used to treat blood plug. So I thought that would be kind of interesting to tell you that. But there's a lot of history. Uh, the Romans, as I said, the Persians, the Egyptians, European people love oils, by the way, because a lot of my mission trips are to Eastern Europe and different parts. So you'll see that they have incorporated it more in their everyday, especially cleaning products, uh, laundry detergents, and just personal care, too. So I think that's very fascinating, and because I travel a lot, I find that really interesting. Jaws has went to France, and they and she... We both have went to France, but she spent a lot of time with France because she has a child that lives in France. Mm-hmm. So we, she's also, we compare notes all the time, just amazed how much more advanced in the oils they are than us. So yeah. you're going to do Well, and then uh, I got sick when I was over there, um, kind of an altitude sickness or something. Anyway, um, I didn't feel well, so I went to their doctor. Jean-Philippe took me to his doctor. And um, he, sub- he and he prescribed oils, and that was kind of the first time I thought, oh gosh, I wouldn't have thought of it for that. I used it for perfume and for deodorant, and you know, for di- just diffusing and stuff like that. But I ingested them because that's what the French do, and I thought, Ugh! but it worked, and so um, that was my experience with the with the French. Plus, they have the lavender fields there, which are amazing. And uh, they have a lot of different oil field, I mean, essential oil fields, flowers there that they um, do distill. So, are you on the plants? Okay. Okay. So, so one of the questions, as I said, we're keeping it basic. A lot of times I think when I study a subject, I like to know where do these things come from? And how, how are they distilled? And I'm one of those I got to know. My dad used to say, you're always asking me questions. And, and I've always been that way. So, so I thought Jaws put this in, and I think it was a good thing. So, so we distill them from shrubs. They're not just flowers. They come from trees. They come from the root in the tree a lot of times, bushes, fruits, rinds, resins. So uh, one of the resins is frankincense and myrrh. So 
that's one of the that we know and herbs so just so you know where they kind of come from so distilling is a form to get the oils out and so they all the byproduct with which everything has a water to it they take that out and just just capture the oils so you can imagine it takes a lot of product to get that get a tiny little thing of oils so think i appreciate when i when I think about it, I, I really admire people that do this. It's quite interesting. So this is a compound, okay? And so when you think of it, it is very strong strength. So do, you don't need to douse yourself all over if you're trying to treat yourself or something. A little dot goes a long ways. And so we're going to get in how to use them. But just know it's a compound, and it's very strong. So I think we have a slide, too, on, yeah. on straight. And, and the purpose of the essential oils is, I mean, just for the plant, from the plant's perspective, it's for attracting. A, a lot of you all um, go out into maybe your garden or something, and you'll smell your roses or, or all kinds of different things. And, and their attraction for other animals or a scent is for another, for bee pollinators. Um, well, next to this type of vegetable, because it will draw the um, pests from one to a, to this one that, you know, like marigolds, I always think of marigolds next to tomatoes, you know, and it will take the hornworms from, or the dill, dill next to tomatoes takes hornworms away from plants. So, so if there's a whole, this was a great design. And I, I used to always be afraid to um, tell people about oils and to say, well, I sell them. And I thought, wait a minute, I didn't make these. I didn't make these. There's a better person that made these. God made these. I didn't make them, but I can use them and I can share what I know about them because they have they have helped support our family a lot. Okay, so we put this slide up because we wanted to show you all the body the parts of your body that it actually affects. So essential oils, it, we put a nice list up here so you can understand. Um, it, it really can help stress. I have a couple stories that I'm going to interject here. I have a niece, and she just, she's brilliant, and she goes to Baylor, and she's just really bright. But for some reason, her stress levels are very high, which we know with Dr. Ann now, <laughs> some other things that she can do, which are supplements to help it. But one of the things that's really helped her to get by so she can actually get on a plane is, is, is oil for stress. So it can actually cause a different reaction, which is wonderful when you're having these situations. And so it's changed her life completely where she can, you know, be at Baylor and study and live there by herself and get on planes and those type of things. Where she And she just went, I got a praise report, she just went to Uganda. So think about that on a mission trip and had never been out of the country. So, uh, pardon me? There's, there's one called Stress Away that I love, and it's a compound between a couple, and I can get into that later, but that's one of the ones that she uses, and then obviously she loves lavender. So there's a couple ones that I've trained her to use, you know, for different things that are happening. But, but emotions is one of them, too. Any type of sickness we have, we can also we can treat sickness and illness with them as well. So did you have anything you want to add on that? Okay, so applying oils is important. And um, so, again, there are compounds that have very uh, high strength. So it doesn't take a lot to put on. And they're tiny because it takes a lot of, of flower herbs or whatever that's distilled into the bottle. So when you, when you actually start using oils, and this is really important, and I found... I, I read a lot on the internet, and I like, especially about medicine and oils. And there's a, there's kind of two groups. There's those that are just they do not want to embrace oils in the medicine world, and then there's those that are more functional medicine and they embrace them. But I think the fear is when they have to treat a patient because they did not do the right things. So when I train people to use oils, I tell them how to do it. So first of all, if it's a combination of oils, you whether it's a combination or a single, and I'll get into those the verbiage in a minute, but 
you need to test these on your body before you actually do anything with them. So how do you do it? Well, if you're an adult, you just take and put one drop on the and go in a circular motion and just rub the oil like so. If you and leave it for like five or ten minutes, if you have a reaction, you will have it immediately. And I usually tell people give it ten minutes. If you actually have a reaction, do you run to the sink and use soap and water? No. Okay, it's an oil. So if you use soap and water, all you're doing is 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 pushing it further into your into your skin cells. So you, if you have a reaction, you need to use any type of oil. Really, doesn't have to be. Doesn't matter whether it's olive oil, canola oil, or whatever. Just take something like a paper towel and wipe it off, and it'll actually take the oil. Oil and oil connect together. Okay. And what kind of reactions? Yeah, I have a. <laughs> Yeah, I have a good story about this one. I actually started, when I, did, when I got my aromatherapy degree, one of the things I had to do is write a thesis paper. And so I had to, had to really use the oils on patients. And so I actually had a really bad reaction with somebody. And so I didn't really understand testing them. And so it was really a sad situation. But this lady took, um, and she digested one of the oils when we didn't test her. And so she had hives and she had a severe allergy um, and we did, we treated her. The good thing is, is that I was working with a doctor and we were able to treat her and bring her back. Now come, come full circle on this story. We ended up finding that she had, she had lung cancer. And so the type of oil that we were actually using is called Thies, which is the same oil used for, hello, welcome. It, that is used for black plague, and it's used a lot of time to treat people that have, you know, types of diseases. And she was digesting it, and it actually was treating her cancer. So a lot of the reactions that she was having because, and at that time she did not know that she had cancer. So, but I just warn people, and the, and it, please accept my warning because, honestly, that really affected me personally because I'm a nurse, and so I have a license, and so I always tell people that. It's so important to test the oils. And, and even if you think, like, I love lavender, and I may not think there's all types of lavender out there, and they are, they, so you need to know what type of lavender, and they're all listed. On any of the oils, if you open up the, the actual label, it'll tell you what type of, you know, there's French lavender, there's all different types. So you may not have, a re, you know, the type of lavender we have here in Kansas is not the same that we have in France, right? So you might think, hey, no big deal. But I always tell people, do, don't do always just think it's going to be okay. I always test, okay? Is everybody clear about that? And I, I recommend it. So another thing I want to say, we're saying about applying oils, okay? But I, I would say whether you're applying oils or you choose to go into aromatherapy, uh, you know, where you're actually diffusing it through water. We have a couple of them in the room. Um, I would say it's just a good practice to do, but when you get into digesting, it's an absolute must. And this is a basic class we're saying. When you get started, really <laughs> applying them to your body, you still need to test in the inner aromatherapy, but digestion, you almost need to really study a lot more. And and how you get to, everything's on the internet now. <laughs> and so um, there's some reference guides that you can buy that actually list all the oils. And these are wonderful study guides, by the way. It talks about what single oil. Single oils means if I just have lavender, I don't have something else. That's a single, single oil. If I have a blended, I might have lavender. I might have orange, I might have, you know, different ones to make a certain blend that do something. So in the books, it talks about singles, it talks about blended, it talks about why you want to use them for certain types of things. So if you had MS, you might use a certain type of oil. And so digestion of oils is very popular, but I would say it's not for the novelist. And when I say that, it, as I gave this story to this lady, it's very important that you know what you're doing when you get to that level. I would say start out 
with just maybe applying them to your skin and diffusing them before. And definitely get the reference guides. By the way, those reference guides are listed on phones, too. You can get an app. So, so Jaws and I have apps for them, too, because we constantly run into situations where we have to talk to people about and, what types of And words. we also have a list of the reference guides back there, um, just various ones. So if, if you didn't pick one up, they, they are back there. Okay. All right. So um, one of the things that um, that you can do there, how do you want to talk to this one? So go ahead. I'll let you take. Well, that we talk about how they enter. Well, when you when you smell a rose, you can see right here that um, oils uh, have the ability to reach the heart, liver, and thyroid in just a few seconds, and they're also found in the bloodstream within a few seconds as well. And um, I don't know how many of you have a favorite smell, but one of my favorite ones was um, stepping into my granddad's garage, and he was a carpenter. And I love the smell of cedar wood. It just gives me such a great memory. And so our brain stores that, and it, it'll bring out, it, it can bring out good memories. Um, a, a beautiful rain. Um, you can smell the rain coming a lot of times. You can smell when they've uh, mowed the grass, you know. So there's, there's different things that will set off memory. Um, and like she said, as well as support our health systems in, in our body in, in different places. And um, these limbic regions have a role, with, like I said, with the emotions, with memory, with learning, and other body functions. And one of, the, one of the fun things, I think, was to learn about what she said about the Greeks. The Greeks used to use a, a sprig of rosemary over their ear when they took if they were studying, because it helped them focus and concentrate. So I thought that was really interesting. And so when I'm studying, guess what I use? I'll use a drop of rosemary <laughs> to help me concentrate and help me focus on what I'm studying. So, th so th how long do they last? Well, they, they last um, usually in three to six hours. They're gone from your body. So they don't last. They do not bioaccumulate mm -hmm. chemicals. Harsh ingredients will bioaccumulate in your system, in your fat. It'll store it because the body doesn't know what to do with a lot of the, the chemicals that are out there, even the artificial sweeteners and things. The body doesn't know what to do with it, so it will store it, and it will store it up. So you want to be careful with that. Okay. So we're going to talk about the different grades of oils, and we're not here pushing Young Living, even though we have the Young Living on the line. Jaws and I use Young Living, but that's through tons of research that we've determined for us that works. Um, but we do want to talk to you about different grades. The type of grade that Young Living has is called therapeutic. That is the highest grade, and they give it an A. And then there's food grade ones as well. Uh, food grade ones are, remember how we said you might be interested in cooking with essential oils. So food grade ones were, they're, they're, they're actually the same components that are in regular oils. It's just that you can actually put those into food, too. There's perfume. A lot of the perfumes that we use out there, they do have essential oils, you know, like store-bought ones, too. They have essential oils in them. But you can make your own perfumes without all the toxic ingredients as well. But they're just a different grade. It's, it's grade C. Grade D would be just flower water. So if you have rose water, if you have um, lavender water, you know, of those types, there's another grade called Yeah, floral, grade. floral water is what's left over after they've distilled the oil. And a lot of times they'll just put that in a bottle and you can get it for a lot less. Um, and, it, and it's nice, too. I mean, you just spray it and you can walk into it kind of like you do perfume. And, but it, it doesn't have the potency, and, it, and it's usually not used for anything but just just to, like, a room freshener or something. Yeah, we, they do use rose water on the face. I don't know if you've seen that, you know, as astringent. And so that's quite popular, too. And that would be a grade D um, that they use that on. So um, one of the questions that we deal with a lot being that we sell oils and we talk about oils all the time. Anybody that's around us knows that we talk about oils a lot. 
but um, Guilty. <laughs> first, th first thing they're going to ask us is how safe. And it's really a good question because there's a lot of information out there now that, you know, about the safety. Now, we believe if you do test yourself, if you do, there's been a lot of um, research, and it's like a product that's been used forever, right? I mean, from the beginning of time, right? We're talking the Bible. So, so if you use them properly, and that's, that's important, then we believe they're really safe. There's literature, there's research that, that is saying that. But how do you learn to use them safe? Again, you need to use reference guides. Reference guides are huge, whether you use it online or you actually get one of these. And I have, I have a great big reference guide for like my desk in my office. So that's even bigger than this, and it has more clinical references um, for nursing, and it also they also have ones that is medicines with the oils. So you, if you're taking certain medicines, you can also they make reference guides out there as well. But there, it's important to know that they are very safe. The one thing that we want to mention here: there's certain oils, the citrus ones. There is a photosensitivity to those oils. So what, what happens is if you, some people, I love lemon and I love orange and all that, but you do not want to use those as certain products or if you're making your own products and they go out or even if you are just applying them on your skin and then go out into the sun because you will burn. And so we always try to, one of the things, if you get a people that you're really training, we, we personally do a lot of training you know, with people and me, because we believe training is a very big part of using the oils as well. Okay. Well, and we talked about it, a little goes a long way. It's like one drop um, is is a lot. And so you don't want to like over <laughs> overuse it because you're wasting money, but also that, that one drop does a lot. And you can even put it with a carrier oil to extend it if you feel like you want to, you know, rub it a little farther than what that little bit goes. But, um, there's a in, a in a five milliliter bottle, there's about 90 drops. In a 15 milliliter, there's about 250 drops. And um, so you can get quite a bit from quite a bit from them. And we want to talk about carrier oils. And on the back, we did have a we do have a, uh, a sheet that gives carrier oils, um, tells you all about them because they can make it go farther. And also there's different types of carrier oils. There's a like the heavier, the, the medium weight, and the light. There's also a cosmogenics in there that tells about if it, it will plug, um, can, can I say plug the pores in your skin. So it just depends on your skin type, um, your maturity level of skin. So give them, a and, light, give them a light one. Give them an example of light, a light oil. Can you think of a light one? No, it's not right here. Because okay. I use, well, okay, okay. jojoba oil, almond uh -huh. oil. But, right. You know, if you have a nut allergy, you don't want to be using almond oil. And there's coconut oil. And, um, you know, it's it's just whatever you prefer. So try different ones. Try different ones, um, if nothing else. So. They do. Yeah, they we do. yeah we do. Young yeah. Living carries B6. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, V six. Yeah, yeah. V6, well, right? sometimes sometimes you like a carrier oil like coconut. It depends what you're trying to do with the product, right? If you're making maybe a lotion for your skin, you might choose almond oil, coconut oil. Yeah, like we use different ones than the Young Living one. That we use the Young Living one too, but it just depends what you're trying to do with it. If you're digesting, I love the Young Living one. You know, to make my capsules out of and I also use uh, uh, virgin you know olive oil I like that one too I also do coconut and stuff but again there's Jaws did a great printout back there or somebody did the printout but anyway it talks about the carrier oils some of the oils you have to use carrier oils with and I want to inject that right now um, and again that comes with study we're, there's so many oils out there. And in fact, when you go when you go out, take a l look. I have like three of my cases back there, and there's and that's just not even, um, you know, I, I didn't even touch the scratch of how many oils are out there. So it, it those are the ones that that I tend to use myself. But there's just tons out there. And as you read the book, you'll find out there's just tons, or you get the application guide. 
of oils out there, but some require carrier oil to use them. Now, when I say it, it that can be for topical reasons. It is not usually for aromatherapy, but it is for digestion. Yeah. So you will definitely see with a lot of them that you will need to use a carrier oil if you digest them. Right. Okay, so a lot of times we get a question of, what, well, what would I start with? I don't want to, you know, I don't know where to start, what kind to use. And so um, I, I say I'm going to give you the three I would recommend to start off with, and then I'm going to give you the bonus oil that I think <laughs> I would prefer. But anyway... Lavender, they call it the multi-tool or the Swiss Army knife because what do you want it to do? Well, what do you want it to do? It, it, um, it's used as alternative for a lot of things. It uh, supports your, your immune system. It can support your respiratory. Just, just like everything it says here, it's, it's a great bath water. Just sit in with some Epsom salt and kind of let it take you away. And... Um, and out of all the essential oils, lavender is probably considered the most versatile of all of them. And it's the one that I tell people, carry with you always. Yeah, if yeah. you get into essential oils, lavender is the multi-purpose. And I'll just interject from a medical uh, thing and just kind of tell a little story here. I do a camp with the children um, at the church I go to, Pathway. And so I did middle school uh, camp, and we had a kid that actually fell. I was running. They were following me. We were doing a leader find. <laughs> and so we were running and they had cut the trees and they left stumps and we didn't know it was dark and we couldn't use lights. And so <laughs> we were running. And so they were following me. And so one kid cut her leg open and needed stitches. But dummy me, I fell too. But I actually had a hemorrhage. But I was so worried about this kid because, I mean, she had a huge, huge cut. And so we were trying to treat her. And then afterwards, I realized I was having this throbbing. And then, of course, I looked down, and I had like a, an egg size thing happening. So first thing I did, I was smart enough to know lavender is one of those antiseptics. It also will reduce any bleeding, you know, it's stopping hemorrhaging. So it's an all-purpose kind of situation. It can be used to, if you're sick, there's all kinds of things. So I took that lavender, and this is really a statement for oils. I took it, and, and I wasn't just putting a little bit. I put a, a lot, right? And then I took ice, and I elevated my leg. And the, the, I had a co-teacher that was with me in our dorms, and I did tell her. I said, oh, yeah, I got a little hemorrhage going on here. And she was all flipped out, and she said, well, we need to take you to the hospital. And I said, well, no, I'm a nurse, so we're going we're gonna to treat it this way in the morning. If it's still bad, of course, I'll go. But I said, I think this can do it. Got up in the morning. I was grand, and we did all kinds of water sports, and the water was really cold. So I just incorporated, you know, that type of therapy using, you know, that as well. So, so just to tell you, I use, I, you will never find me without lavender. It treats everything, mosquito bites, bites, um, you know, if you, yeah, exactly. It, it's just burns everything. So it's the one that you never want to leave home with. Yeah. Without, um, just without. just so you know that uh, there, you see the two colors of the the bottles up there. Well, the white one is our Vitality line. That means it's ingestible, and um, we we have to do that per FDA regulations. But it is it is the same thing that's in the in the larger size. But that just tells people it is ingestible. Um, also, lavender it takes two hundred and twenty pounds. And it will provide seven pounds of oil. So that's just some little fun thing. Also, um, peppermint. As you can see, it's kind of the jack of all trades as well. It has a lot to do with um, your uh, respiratory. Um, my, my son uses it and when he goes to the gym. He'll put some on his uh, towel around his neck, and he'll just breathe it in. He'll put it in his sports water. He'll put it in his water. Um, with our oils, though, you always want to use glass or um, stainless steel, never plastic or aluminum, So you, or styrofoam. It'll, it'll eat the styrofoam. We have a little experiment we show people. <laughs> it'll eat right through it because it's trying to, it's trying to clean up what, what is there. Um, what do you use what peppermint you use? for? I have regular, I have minor headaches. Mm -hmm. I have a headache, and I will say one time I had a headache, and I was like, I got some 
Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to be careful because peppermint will affect the membrane in your eye. So you definitely want to be careful. Getting close. Yeah. 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 It'll, it'll only happen only, once. It, it, only, it only takes one time and you go, ooh. And those of us ladies that have our own personal <laughs> summers going on, peppermint's great on the back of your neck. And it takes about um, a pound of peppermint to, to one uh, 15 milliliter bottle of essential oil. Yeah. So I use peppermint. Um, for respiratory, as Josh says, um, I've been in situations where somebody's having an asthmatic attack, and I've been able to prevent them from going to the hospital by just having the oils and knowing what to do right then. And peppermint is one. One of the things, if you're very sleepy in the afternoon or any time, peppermint also will awaken you. It's a good one when you're driving. And I go. I have a ranch in Nebraska, and so when I go there, sometimes I get a little sleepy coming back after working so hard, and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and use peppermint. It. And I have a diffuser in my car, too. So and when I told you we're crazy about oils, we're crazy about oils. But it works on digestion. If you have a, if you have a sour stomach or you're having digestion issues, it's a wonderful one. Peppermint's a great one for that as well. Kids that have stomach aches, you can take and rub that on there and it'll usually, or even throwing up. I've had, I, when my son was younger, you know, I used it for that and it took care of those situations as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And exactly what she's saying. So I'm just going to demonstrate what you said, but um, she was saying put, put a drop, you know, in her hand. She rubs it together. There's a knack to doing this. So when you inhale it, you got to close close your hands, but you got to, when you stick it around, you, you need to take it in, you know, let it to get in. Yeah, yeah, so there's a knack to doing it, so I always tell people, and that'll work really with good asthmatic patients, too. You can use that, and they'll get in uh, directly into them, and then, you know, if I know they're not allergic, we'll go ahead and have them digest, so we get a tube part, you know, we're using topical and then and uh, in, inhaling as well as digesting as well. Go ahead. Now you can see up here we got the lemon. Um, it's called the Energizer. And um, it's also well known sci even scientifically because it cleanses the toxins from your body. It's also a great, it also is a great cleaner. I mean, you can put it with vinegar and water and make yourself a little DIY cleaner without a lot of the uh, harsh chemicals. Um, it stimulates the lymphatic drainage. Renew, uh, like she said, it can rejuvenate your energy, uh, purifies your skin, and it fights bacteria and fungi. And um, along with lemon, I like orange as an energizer. Um, I put it in a lot of things. And lemon, lime, orange, grapefruit. Grapefruit's another one of my favorites. I like it in a sparkling water. Because um, a lot of people that are trying to kick soda, we were trying to kick um, soda, and <laughs> that one really replaced it because we don't even have the sugar in it. We don't have sugar. We don't have any any um, sweetener in it at all, and it it just refresh. It's just refreshing, and it's a pick me up as well. Grapefruit, um, grapefruit's a good one for weight loss. You'll see a lot of people use grapefruit. It just has. And like if a you need a natural tooth uh, whitener, teeth whitener. Uh, orange and lemon in your toothpaste is really good as well. And it, it takes 75 lemons to make a, a bottle of uh, lemon essential oil. So, again, it's very strong, but, you know, use it sparingly or, you know. Frankincense, of course, I had to tell you, is, is, is called the powerhouse. It's, like I said, it's one of my favorites. It does come from a resin, and it's in the dry uh, regions of Somalia, India, and Pakistan. And it's a different... Um, and it's and it's different because of the arid conditions. So it is a resin, and they have to um, distill it from the resin. The word frankincense actually comes from frank incense, which is uh, means quality incense in Old French, and um, it's also associated with many religions all over the world. And um, it smells a combination. And we, like she said, we have open yes. open oils back there. So if you want to smell anything, we have it back there. Um, it smells of pine lemon, and it's kind of a woody scent. And um, 
the researchers have studied frankincense and found that it's most outstanding um, in beneficial with its terpenes and uh, boswellic acids. So it means that means it's strongly anti-inflammatory and protective um, of healthy cells. So, like I said, those are those are like my four favorite oils. And what's really cool is you can even mix them up. You can mix lemon with uh, lavender and and diffuse it, and and it just the different scents. And so, I mean, you can get really creative, and um, and you can get really creative. And there's some really you know, not so good creations out there yeah. too. My grandson comes and he puts different oils <laughs> in different, and I'm like walking in his room like, whoa. He's like, no, it really smells good. And I'm like, I don't think so. And so, in the reference guides, it also talks about the different compounds of the oils that you can use together. And so that's that's nice too. So they've already done the work for you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I have one of Be up here. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. It's wonderful to see yeah. users that really understand really. about. It's wonderful. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, the yeah. one the one thing I want to say about frankincense, it's one that they do recommend a carrier oil with. And some people don't use it with a carrier, and I know those people that don't, and it's fine. But it is one that they do recommend that and when you start using that one, that you put it with a carrier oil. A lot of cancer patients will apply it in different areas, and they've had a lot of success with, you know, different things. Here at Readin, we do high doses of vitamin C as well. And so it's just a combination. We look at medicine as a holistic thing of, you know, you, you get, it's usually not just one thing. It's a lot of things, as you said. And so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, we're familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yes. Purification. I mean, you can be bit by a spider. Sure. Probably still doesn't even go to the doctor, but mm-hmm. yeah. they stop. Right. Uh, stuff. Mm-hmm. Bad stuff. Mm-hmm. Really bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So now we're going to go ahead and move on, and yeah. we're going to talk about uh, your skin and the sun. One of the things Dr. Ann asked us was about the summer summer oils. You know, stuff that we want to watch for, and also like your skin. And we were talking about you want to be careful with the citrus oils in uh, with your skin. But also, um, there are certain things with um, different sun screens and everything you want to avoid, like SPF um, above 50. It really doesn't give you that much more protection. What you need to remember is, um, number one, read your labels. Read your labels, know what's in it, and you can make a sunscreen that's really healthy, and it, and it helps with your um, uh, skin, what do I want to say, the absorption, and it also helps hydrate your skin. And um, the the oils, we have a sunscreen up here, homemade sunscreen, but it's also back there on the, on the flyers. Um, conventional sunscreens, like I said, usually are full of harmful ingredients. So, you know, try to make your own, and if you can't, please read the labels. And always, one time putting it on is not <laughs> enough. You need to put it on almost, what is it, every hour, couple hours. Yeah. And if you guys all read, and if you don't know, 
In May of 2018, Dr. Ann had a great article mm -hmm. in the Reardon Health Hunter, and that's where I get a lot of my information are the health hunters. That one was excellent because there's all kinds of information of what skin types and all that kind of stuff of what you need to look for. Wear a hat, wear a light shirt. You know, just simple things that um, you need to have when you're out in the sun. And a lot of us don't really realize how much how much damage how much damage we we do. And then um, essential oils for those nasty little pests out there. Again, there's there's some recipes back there, but also to replace um, the harsh chemicals again. And it's not only cheaper, um, but it's healthier for you to use a lot of your own homemade. And it doesn't. The only action you have to do is shake a lot of them because you'll have water or witch hazel in it. Mm -hmm. But, hey, it's worth it and safer for your kids. I saw a, a picture on Facebook not too long ago where some mom had um, sprayed her child with the sunscreen and that child's face blistered. And it was a little bitty child. I mean, it still was having a pacifier. And, I mean, his little face was all blistered. And it said, do not use spray on sunscreen. Because you don't know what it's going to do. That that baby's skin is so tender and so fair. And, you know, so make your own. Put a hat on that baby. And you know. I, did, I, I just was going to interject. If you are using oils on babies, um, Young yeah. Living's done that whole testing line for babies, just so you know. But on testing for a baby, you would not use the, the forearm. You'd actually use the bottom of the feet. The bottom of the feet also will take in the oils really well, but that's where you test for babies. And when you brought up babies, I thought I didn't, I just was talking about the oils mm -hmm. for adults. But Right. And then we, we also wanted to talk, spring cleaning is detox your home time, and now it's kind of <laughs> into summer, but some of us are a little behind on the spring cleaning. But you want to use natural household cleaners. It's summer. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> summer. And um, so there's, I mean, all kinds of things. There's floor cleaners, there's counter cleaners, there's um, you name it cleaners. And so just go on Pinterest. They have all kinds of ideas on what to clean, what to use. And um, we were going to, it's almost time to yes, stop. Right. But what we wanted to do is, if you, we do have a sign-up sheet back there, or if people online are interested, just email Reardon Clinic, um, get in touch with um, the clinic here, and they can sign you up for classes. Just tell them what you're interested in. We do um, it, more in-depth essential oils. We do ditch and switch. That means getting rid of harsh chemicals. Um, we do DIYs. The DIYs are a lot of fun because instead of just going out there and trying it on your own and buying a whole <laughs> bottle of oil or something, um, they range from 5 to $25 depending on what we're making. And we have places um, in South Wichita, West Wichita, and we're working on North Wichita, um, locations of where you can come for a class. And um, it just indicate if you prefer a weeknight or week after, uh, I think Friday afternoons here at Reardon or a Saturday afternoon. And um, we also do biblical oils, animals and oils. And, of course, in August, we'll be able to teach on essential oils and CBD, which is real exciting to us. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have any comments on your sheet, please um, make that comment. And um, our cards, are, our back cards are back there. And then, of course, we have uh, our information right down here. So, if so that's, we, we appreciate it. Does yeah, anybody we really have, appreciate it. Does, I know we're right at 1 o'clock, but does anybody have any questions or comments or Anything you, you're dying to know about? <laughs> well, Go ahead, please. One thing is there's so many things hidden underneath your back bone. Yes, ma'am. So when you put oils on, on your back, you kind of do it on the mm -hmm. side of your back bone. Mm -hmm. and, and there's, there's a plant, and what do you call it? Raindrop, raindrop, raindrop technique, therapy. Yeah. 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 yeah, what she's talking about is a lot of um, massage therapists that are into oils, they know a technique called raindrop therapy. And it, it totally affects uh, your your skeleton as well as your hands and your feet. Um, you know, there's different points of pressures. So by doing different types of things, it can cause, you know, treatment and, and wellness for you. And so that's one of the things that is out there. Yeah, it is in the reference guide. Yeah. It is in the reference guide. But I would get somebody that's well versed in doing professional that for you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we know several massage therapists that mm -hmm. do it so if anybody's interested in that we can give you a name but it's hard to do on yourself yeah it's kind of hard to do. <laughs>
<laughs> but anyway, um, we want to thank Rudin Clinic for letting yes. us do this. I know I, volunteering here every week is one of my, that's a favorite part of my week, except for when my grandkids are here. <laughs> but anyway, so thank you all for being here today. And, and like, we have a drawing. Oh, did, yeah, we everybody have a drawing. Get, did everybody get their little ticket? Is there anybody that didn't sign in? Pauline, did you sign in and get a ticket? Okay, all right. Okay, we're going to do a drawing. We'll have Dr. Ann do it. And then, um, so tell them what they're going to get, Jaws. Oh, okay, we're drawing for a hand sanitizer, a thief's hand sanitizer. 4473371. Pauline, you got this. Okay, and another thief's hand sanitizer.